discovery and innovation. So, yeah, I think that sounds right. All right. Uh, disclaimer, this is an informational event, not a social one. So we're going to be talking a lot. Um, so sorry, but it's a lot of information. So, so uh, today we're going to be talking about move-in because we're just less than a month away. So we're going to be talking about the um, process, uh, when it is, what dates you should be keeping in mind. We're also going to be talking about your room, what you can bring, what you can't bring, uh, what all is already included in your room and living with a roommate and living with suite mates. Um, we're also gonna be talking about your access card because your access card can be a little hard to get acclimated to, whether you should get a digital physical one, where to use it, when to use it, what it's used for. And then dining, because food is important to survival. So we're gonna be talking about food at SEU. So let's start with uh, moving into SEU. Oh, yes. Um, all right. On the next slide are going to be some key important dates that all or that you need to know when you are moving in. That's the most essential date. So if any of you are in lead, your move in is on September 11th. So just remember that one. For international students, it would be September 12th. And then for everyone else, so if you're not part of those two programs, your move in is on September 15th. Please remember that date. But you can also move in up until the whole weekend. Our welcome weekend, which will have like in-person activity events. You're going to have like a meeting with the people on your floor. That will all take place September 17th to the 18th. And you'll finally get to meet all your orientation leaders in person. Sorry. Okay. So um, you're going to have uh, your moving process. It's going to be a little fast paced, but um, you're going to have about 15 minutes to unload um, your things from your car outside. Just because um, there's a time limit on the number of cars that can stay on the pavement at once. And then um, your car can't be towed. So be very, very careful, please. Uh, you don't want it to get towed. Um, the prices are really, really ridiculous. Um, so you're going to be checking in to one of the dorms. You will be getting mails about where to check in. Uh, just because for first years it's very different um and then once you check in uh you're gonna get a move-in cart and then uh you can place your things in the move-in cart take it up to your room get settled in and then please return the card just because we have to reuse them we don't have enough for 2000 kids um uh also um your arrival time if you're not moving in early will be based on your last name that information is in the website um Catherine put it in the chat. Um, so make sure to keep an eye on that, but you will be receiving mails about moving process in general as well. So keep an eye on your mail, please, because a lot of your housing and dining information is always sent through email, at least for these first two months that you are um, on at SCU and you're before SCU as well. Uh, you don't want to miss any important information. And um, there's a housing portal that you all apply at your house through which you applied for your housing through. There is a form there that um, just assists the housing department with when you're moving in. It's not compulsory to fill at all, but it's like a two second form. So um, you can fill it out. It just lets them know whether you're moving in early if you're approved as part of an early arrival group or not. Um, and apart from that, again, keep checking your mail because that's where all the important information is. Um, okay, so here's a list of what you should bring, what you have on campus, and what you should leave. So what you should bring is like your basic bedding stuff, so your sheets, blankets, pillows, all of that stuff. I highly recommend bringing a mattress chopper, actually, just because the beds can be a little uncomfortable. Um, bring towels, all your toiletries, um, detergent, and all of that stuff. You can also purchase that at the cellar. Um, in season clothing, so like warm clothes, but also like clothes for when it's hot. Um, because I feel like Santa Clara does have its seasons, if that makes sense. Um, a fan, if your RLC doesn't have air conditioning, a lamp. Um, Water bottle, like a reusable one is pretty good too because we have a bunch of spots all over campus um, that you can fill that up at. 
And if you plan on using the kitchen, do bring like some dishes, although you can actually rent some of the cooking utensils out in um, downstairs in your RLC. Um, electronics, so your chargers, alarm clock, all of that stuff. Um, school supplies, I know a lot of us haven't gotten our syllabus yet, but I mean, bring the basics like a backpack, a computer, if you use an iPad, an iPad or a journal, just so you can have that kind of stuff ready. And also bring headphones. I know like we're gonna have roommates and all that. So be considerate of them. Don't play your music out loud unless y'all are cool like, like, like that, but be considerate. And then lastly, bring like an emergency kit, like a first aid kit because you never know what's gonna happen and you just wanna be safe. Um, but whenever you get to campus, what is gonna be in your room is a bed, mattress, desk, chair, dresser, utilities, and then you'll have like the laundry facilities. And then what you should leave and not bring to campus is weapons. I mean, you should, yeah, don't bring that. Um, candles, um, pets, don't try to sneak in your dog, you know. Don't bring alcohol or drugs. We are a dry campus. SU does not accept that stuff. Um, don't bring any of that other stuff. Okay, so we're gonna start with what you can and cannot bring into your room. Yes, so as Kayla briefly mentioned, you cannot bring candles. So our alternative would be a diffuser or one of those like Bath and Body Works plug-in. Those really come in handy. Please don't bring candles. Um, no hot plates, no toaster ovens, but do bring a microwave or go to use the oven in the kitchen. <laughs> um, I don't know what the halogen lights are. Apparently they're like really bright lights. Don't bring those, bring LED lights. It's so fun at night when you're walking around campus and you see everyone with the same LED lights. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool, it's a vibe. Um, don't bring anything loud, bring headphones. What a great alternative. Um, some people have brought their like Googles and their Alexas and it's just funny because I hear it through the wall. So if you do bring that, at least put it on low volume because it's kind of weird. Um, but yes, do bring decorations um thumbtacks don't nail stuff into the walls we've had a couple of questions no just use like the the sticky stuff that you can get at target fan a humidifier if you are in smoke it does get kind of hot and when there's no ac it's nice to have a fan um coffee hot pots yes you can bring curry you can bring kettle um and yes as i said before a mini fridge and a microwave <laughs> okay so again living in a roommate it might or might not be a new experience for a lot of people. Um, living with your sibling is very different from living with someone who's around the same age as you and in college. Um, so SU has a lot of provisions. Um, SU has a lot of provisions put in place to kind of help you adjust and make this transition. Um, so some of the things that we recommend are before making any big appliance purchases, purchases Make sure to consult your roommate just because you can obviously split the cost as well. So make it a little cheaper for you. Um, and also it is their space too. So make sure they're comfortable with having certain things like maybe a white noise machine or things like that. Um, and then a microwave microwave and mini fridge can be split. You can also rent them from SCU. Um, so I think one is enough for two people. You don't really need an individual one unless you plan on like stocking it up with just only your things. But really, I don't think it's that necessary. Uh, also, um, you have SU has CFs in all of your residence halls who are community facilitators who live um, on each floor of every residence hall and they're your upperclassmen. So you can always talk to them, um, kind of be friends with them, ask them about their major, whatever you want. But they're also there to help you move in, uh, answer any questions you have about your building, and help you in case you have any conflicts with your roommates or suite mates. Um, they will be holding um, meetings at the beginning and end of each quarter and before any major breaks like spring breaks, um, winter breaks, uh, Thanksgiving, you're going to have meetings that your CFs hold which are mandatory so please go uh, if you don't want to miss out on any information um, about moving out because you can always be charged um, and when you move in, they're going to also hold a meeting, so make sure you go to them as well because they're going to be telling you about the buildings, the charges that you might um, 
pilot, that charges that might pile up if you don't take care of certain things. And you're also um, going to be submitting a roommate agreement form that is checklisted by your CF. This is just to set certain boundaries with you and your roommate, um, like who's going to clean the bathroom if there is one, um, who's going to clean the room at certain times, how to, how you plan on addressing conflict if every ever one arises. If you guys are okay with, if you if you're okay, sorry, if you're okay with like playing music loudly or what time each of you go to bed so that you're just mindful of the other person's space. And if you are living in the suite, you're also going to have to fill out the suite agreement form, which is basically the same thing. It's just with more people who are living in the entire suite, especially if you have a shared bathroom, like who's going to who's going to rotate and clean the bathrooms, the showers, whatever. Um, so it is really important to get these done by the deadline that will be given to you. I believe it's the first two weeks um, that you move in after this first after you move in. But just make sure it's really important to kind of take these things seriously because you want to be mindful about the boundaries and you also just don't want any conflict to arise later that will make it uncomfortable to live with certain people. But again, if something does happen, your CS are always there to help you out. And then you also have your um oh my god, RDs. Sorry. Yeah, your RDs who are your resident directors who are part of SCU's professional staff to help you out. And then what your room comes with, your room comes with two trash cans or four trash cans, two for each roommate. Um one is recycle and one is a trash. A shower curtain for shared bathrooms, like if you're gonna live in a suite or an apartment. Um, a towel rack, a vanity mirror, and if you're in swig, you actually get a full body mirror. A medicine cabinet, and then cable plug point. And then what you can borrow or like rent out from downstairs is trash bags, vacuums, knives, Baking utensils and then common room games. Oh, now it's the access card time. Number three. It's this year we'll talk about the internet. Okay. So um your access card is capable of a lot of things on campus. So be sure to know what it is. I didn't even know that we could print things with our access card. I didn't really have to, so it didn't matter to me, but I didn't know it. I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. But um, you can either get a physical or a digital card. You cannot get both just because you don't want it to be easily available to other thing, other people. Um, and you will get instructions on how to set up your digital card. I don't think the mails go out yet, but they will be sent out soon. But um, just in general, uh, you can also, um, sorry, yeah, you can set up your digital card uh, before you move in or after you move in. I personally set it while I was in line to get checked in while moving in because it was a ridiculously long line. So I was just stood there and set up my digital card. If you are getting a physical card, I believe that um, you will be receiving a temporary card during check-in to get into your room, but after that, you go to the access card office, which is in Benson, right through the door on your left. Um, and then they will give you your per like your permanent visit access card. Um, and uh, just make sure that you don't lose that card too many times, uh, just because you're, I think you are charged after a certain number of times you lose them. Um, and your access card is used for a lot of things. So it's used for getting food from Benson. It's used for your laundry, your flex points, um, you know, getting into your front doors, your side doors of your residence halls, um, getting into your room. And then SU has food trucks that come in every week so you can use your dining points over there. Um, there are cafes around the campus, like at Lucas, at Skitty. You can use your access card meal points over there, uh, even in the library. Um, vending machines, some of them use your access card, and then you can print things using some of the flex points you have, and then you can buy things at the supermarket using your meal points, which is connected to your access card. And then we also have a Bronco bookstore that you can use your flex points from for, so you can buy some SEO merch. Uh, the all team went on a Bronco bookstore haul one day, and we all just bought a bunch of merch. But yeah, your access card is used for a lot of things. Mainly, it's connected to your um, dining points and flex points, so keep that in mind. 
Okay, and then what you can use your access card for um, to get into your buildings for sure. So your the front door, like the main entrance, the ROCs, the side doors, and then any food place like Benson or like the library, Skitty. Um, another thing that you can use your access card for is this. I've had this question a few times. Um, I know some people have classes in other ROCs. So don't worry about that. You do have access to those ROCs, not just yours, whenever you do have that time period for your class. But besides that, um, these are the main things you use it for. Um, the only thing is that for the side doors, you can't use it after 7 p.m. for safety reasons, though. So yes, we have had a lot of questions asking which one should you get, the digital or the physical card? And personally, it really depends on the person. Like I had the physical, but then like Disha had the digital. So I'll just talk about the pros and cons of each. Obviously, if you have the phone one, you are being eco-friendly since you're not wasting plastic. Um, it is harder to lose your phone or to get locked out just because most likely you'll have your phone on you or somewhere near you at all times. Um, another good thing is that there's no damage costs um, unless you damage your phone, but that's like a different issue. So you don't have to deal with that. You could also connect it to your Apple Watch. Your Apple Watch works just as fine if you don't want to use your phone all the time. Um, the cons about the digital card is supposedly like your phone is still supposed to work, I believe, up to four hours after it dies. You should still be able to get into your room. I've had some friends who've had issues with this and then they had to call campus see if you know, it would call as a lockout. So that reliability isn't always going to be there. Um, it just really depends when you get to that situation. That goes along with the other statement. There might be some card reader issues, um, especially if you don't have an iPhone. There's been issues with Androids not working in the laundry rooms or in other areas. So then you'd have to follow up with that to make sure you have access to those locations. So with the physical card, obviously it's the opposite. You don't have to bring your phone everywhere. So for me, I liked it. I like not having to bring my phone when I had to do laundry because it's just a hassle to bring it when I don't really need it. Um, you get to have a school ID with your picture on it, just like we have had in middle school and high school. So it's just a nostalgic, nostalgic moment. It's also easy um, when you go out to restaurants or in different locations, when they ask for proof, for some reason, people believe a student ID, like a physical copy, way more than like a phone copy. So that's why I like that one as well. It's a lot easier to carry when you are holding a lot of stuff earlier. So as I mentioned with the laundry example, if you drop your phone, you break your phone. If you drop your access card, it doesn't really matter, especially when you're carrying a lot of stuff. The cons about the physical card is that you will most likely get more lockouts. It just depends on how much of a responsible person you are. It's a lot easier to leave your access card because you're not used to it, especially during fall quarter. Um, I guess I did want to mention that you do get three free lockouts per year. So like I'm going to repeat that. Three free lockouts per year. And each additional one is an extra $50. So again, $50 is a lot for a lockout. So this choosing between these, it's really up to you and what you would decide. Um, another issue with the physical version is when I had it on the back of my phone, it wouldn't always work with the reader. So you would most likely either have it on the back of your phone and take it out every time you wanted to use it. And as I mentioned, like you could drop it in the sewer and then you would have to pay for a replacement fee. It really depends. Um, I believe the fee to switch between physical and digital is around 20 to $25 though. So let's say halfway through the year, you did want to switch. That would be the cost for that. If you don't get locked out, you'll meet me at the housing office and then I'm just going to have to give you a temporary card. So be careful. So we're going to go ahead with dining at SCU. Um, food at SCU, you have a lot of options, but we're just going to go into detail. Is this one me? This is me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So Benson is like the main place you're going to be getting your food from. Uh, the different options there they have is sushi. Um, we have a poke bar and then sushi rolls, but they stop selling those. They only sell them for the like weekday, so Monday through Friday, and then they stop after, I believe, three, right? Two, after two. And then Stax, Stax is really popular. They sell sandwiches there. It's like a Subway kind of, um, that one's good. And then we have the pack room for pasta. Um, that one's, it was, yeah, you can customize your own pasta sometimes, but then sometimes you already have like pre-made pasta that you just order. 
Um, the salad bar is my favorite because you can just go get a bowl and then customize whatever you want. They also have like um, on the other side, there's a waffle machine. So you can use that to make your own waffles. They have a cereal bar so you can get cereal, oatmeal in the morning. And then they have like a little thing for just bread, like bagels, loaves or whatever. And they have a gluten-free section. So that's cool. Um, yeah, there's toppings too. It's not just plain oatmeal. Um, Power Up. It's vegan and gluten free. And then Globe. Globe is um, a little section with international vegan food. And most weekdays they have acai bowls when you can just add your own toppings. So that's fun. And it's not usually the same thing every day. Um, Mission Bakery, coffee and bakery, you know, you just they have sweets there and fruit cups. I do like the fruit cups there. Um, Pop-up stations are different little snacks that they have. I know for like um, the Star Wars one, May the Fourth Be With You, they had a special thing for that one. That one was cool. And 540 is pizza. Fire is like fast food kind of they have burgers fries and like chicken tenders and I think that's it yeah Packer Express they also have um oh sorry I'm frozen <laughs> keep going keep going okay okay um and they have Asian bowls okay that's it for Benson Okay, sorry, we were laughing because she was just frozen on our screen. I don't know if it happened with y'all too. But um, I just want to mention, Kayla mentioned like mozzarella sticks. There's like late nights at Benson. I'm not sure if y'all heard about this, but they sell food up until midnight after dinner time. And it's like chicken tenders, some burgers, fries, mozzarella sticks. I, I think it's only certain days of the week though. Um, So yes, if you're ever hungry, there's always that option. I mean, when it's open sorry um so for all the special requests or like the dietary restriction people I did kind of like want to put I guess some descriptions of what food you might be able to find just because we say vegan food but you're like okay but what what's the choices so um I guess I'll start off with the vegetarian and gluten-free options because mostly in the same locations where you'll find vegetarian there is going to be some gluten-free options so at the salad bar obviously like you get to choose your own ingredients so you get to see what they have um, for the soup of the day, it is most likely either going to be gluten-free or vegetarian. One of them always is. And there will be like a sign which will tell you which it, if it is or if it isn't. Um, 540, which again was like the pizza place. There's always gluten-free pizza. And there's also vegetarian with their cheese options. In Globe, some of the vegetarian options are the chicken bowls and the tofu bowl. Same with gluten-free. For Power Up, this is the solely like vegan option. All of their stuff is also gluten-free. Um, for pack rim, there's teriyaki tofu. So yes, they do a really good job at least at giving you other options so you're not just eating salad every day. Um, La Perilla, this is, I believe, only vegetarian and not gluten-free. It's one or the other. Um, that's why I put the little star. But for vegan options, Power Up, as I mentioned, is always vegan. Um, I really like their Tex-Mex bowl because of their chips. There's also Pad Thai noodles and like Korean chicken bibim pop. So that's always nice. Um, acai bowls are vegan that's honestly the best thing I all my vegan friends love that so that's a plus and um, I also want to plug this because a lot of people don't know there is a menu that you could find out so you get to see what food there is for the whole week and it tells you if it's vegan or vegetarian and you'll find that on the app and I'll like point that out on the, at the very last slide yes, I'm vegan and so like I can tell you globe is pretty good like not all the time I'll be honest there are some of the Dishes are pretty not great, <laughs> but that's just me. But some of the like the Tex Mex bowl, and then they have like the cheese enchilada, which is vegan. I really like those, it's pretty, it's a good change of pace. But uh, so there are cafes around campus, like we've mentioned a couple of times. Um, you have Fresh Bike that's skinny, which is um, the new innovation building. Uh, you have uh, I don't know how to say that, Caden. At Lucas, uh, which gives you coffee and uh, a couple of other basic breakfast items. 
And then you have some stream at the library, which is again like some basic items and you know, coffee, tea, whatever. Um, there is a menu at each cafe that you can see. Um, so you have some basic co coffee, tea options. You can also order online from the uh, mobile ordering app that you're going to download. Um, and then you have fresh bites um, that gives you a couple of sandwich options or just some slight snack options. And then you have the cellar, which is a really big resource that you should use. Um, it's located under Benton. Um, and then it's uh, basically, it's like a little small, tiny mini grocery store. You don't want to see a grocery store. And you have like cereals, protein bars, some frozen foods, vegan options are there too. Um, a lot of chips, a lot of energy drinks. Um, you have a lot of vegetables that are available too. Um, and you can use your meal points to buy them. So if you are running high on meal points, then you shouldn't be. This is a really great way to spend them in case you want to cook on your own or you just want to buy some snacks instead of going to Safeway. Just because Safeway can be a little more expensive because you've already paid for your meal points and there isn't any added tax. Safeway, there's a lot of tax and wh whoever is not from California, California tax is absolutely ridiculous. You don't want to be paying it if you have other options. So try to go to the seller as much as possible if you do want to buy groceries. And if there's not available, then you can come and take for your right opposite thing. Oh, um, okay. Points used for dining. So the dining points um, can be used for food, not like all over campus where you can purchase food. So Skitty, Library, I think Lucas to Benson. Uh, I don't think I'm missing any. Okay. Um, and then for the seller, but that's basically it for dining points. And then you have your flex points, which is like your own money pretty much, but you use it on campus. So you can use it for like laundry, um, printing stuff like papers and everything and you can use it for off-campus stuff so there's a few restaurants that we actually can go to off-campus and you can use your flex points for that um, I really recommend Ike's and I know there's a bunch of other places too Togo's um, Peace of My Heart one of our OLs works there please so should go visit her and Kramer's. yeah oh Kramer. yeah uh, what else? <laughs> Wicked Chicken, um, and a few other places. I'll, we can send the list later. <laughs> yes, and as I mentioned, right there, again, people open this app every day and they don't know that there's a menu. It literally says right there, dining services menu. And that it shows up around, I believe it's Monday morning. They don't update it on Sunday, but you could see, um, I guess, everything in Benson, their meals for the whole week. So that's always good to know. And then with that being said, we're going to get into our Q&A. So I'm going to start addressing the questions that were um, in the chat, starting with the first one of saying, do people, the people who are going on the Into the Wild trips, do they move in September 11th? From my understanding, okay, yeah, they should take it. So uh, if you are going on to the Into the Wild trip, you will, if you're part of the early movement group, you will get a mail. I think those mails have already gone out. I was wrong. They have gone out. Um, uh, so early movement groups, you will be able to move into your door in your residence hall early, um, uh, just because you have to go on a trip, and by the time you come back, well, the weekend will start. So yes, you can move in early. Okay. And then um, someone asked, and I got addressed, but can we put the LED lights in your room if it won't damage? From what I've seen, the actual LED lights do damage it, so I'd recommend getting the command strip separately and just like attach it to yourself and don't use like the sticky thing that comes with the LED lights. And did any thought? Yeah, okay. Um, another one is, it's a common question actually, because this happened to me. It's like, what should we do if we can't find our roommates on Instagram or anywhere else? This happened in this roommate story. Okay, this happened to me. And I was like, okay, where is this girl? So like I emailed her and then I was like, by the way, like I couldn't find your socials. Like, can you send them to me? she like linked them like she, she like gave me a website I go uh oh this is about to be a weird situation <laughs> and I was right but like it's fine I would just suggest email them that would be the only way to get con in contact with them until you see them in person you can find your roommate's email ID on the housing portal 
because you guys have been, you all have been given your room assignment, so it should be right there. Or mostly if you just, just search up first and last name on like Gmail, um, unless you have this, a really common last name, you can be able to find them. Um, do we have to pay to use vacuum or kitchen utensils? No, you can just borrow them. Um, they might ask for your room number and your name. Um, I believe that's the protocol. Um, <laughs> do y'all recommend taking a mini vacuum or just using the RLC vacuum? This depends on where you live. In Swig, I use the broom, so it depends. Um, what do y'all say? You used a broom? Yes, really? Four. It was hardwood four. I have hardwood four. I still use a vacuum. We're both different. Dang, I haven't used a broom in so long. Oh my god. Uh, but if you have carpet floors, um, I would recommend, you don't have to obviously clean every day, but once or twice a month, definitely do bring out that big vacuum and give it a good sweep. Just because even if you're a clean person like I am, your room can get really dirty. I don't know how that happens, but it was so annoying and I was just so annoyed by it. So I was like, okay, we're going to clean every two weeks. But uh, I also had a mini vacuum in case I like spilled some snacks. So I have that in hand too. So use that. I would recommend both, but you can always just use big vacuum at consistent periods to keep your room clean. Please keep your room clean. Just a personal request. You don't have to buy a vacuum, I guess, is what I'm saying, or what we would recommend. You don't have to buy it. If you have one in your house, like let's say you have a mini one for your car, yes, bring it because obviously you can easily store it under your bed or like on top of the closet. But no, you don't have to buy one. I'd recommend buying a microwave instead. <laughs> so um, again, another question was, can you get both types of cards so the, for the access card? No. Everyone during my year did not understand this. You can only get one, physical or digital. You cannot get both. You can switch over and pay a fee, but you can only get one. Um, and then I kind of address this, but is there a website to see what food you'll be offering each day and what that what hours? Can you hear me? It says unstable. Yeah, it's now we can. Website. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will link the website. It, right now, there's nothing on there because it's summer, but the hours are gonna. Can you hear me? Why is this? Okay, yeah. The hours are gonna show up on the app. Um, it'll literally say if it's open. Here, let me. I'll actually show y'all. So this is the app, red means open, black means close. And it'll say like close today or be back at 5.30 for dinner. So you, you'll easily know what's open and what's closed. I will warn you the first two weeks that you're there, it is very possible that app kind of crashes a lot just because there's like an overload of information for the app itself. Um, and a lot of people don't know how to use it properly or something, something like that. So Benson is kind of a mess the first two weeks you're there, just because they're trying to get used to the new students and how many there are, there's an influx of a lot of them, but it calms down over time and you get used to it, so it's okay. Okay, um, again, my last <coughs> message is, what would you recommend doing when at, for at least the first gen or like the lead people get into their rooms? That's the first part of the question. Um, and you don't want to address that. Wait, can Would you repeat, repeat it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. What would you recommend when lead students get into your room? Or I guess any early move-in people. Um, For lead, I am a lead student. And for early move-in, you don't have that much time to actually move in on your actual move-in day. Because there's a ceremony like right after, I think, 2 p.m. It might be a different time this year. But from my time, it was after 2 p.m. So, like, they have a schedule for you for lead week. So, you just follow that. Um, you, I guess, at night, you can decorate or, like, finish setting up. But really, the whole thing about early moving for lead students is to just get your room number, get access to your room, get all your stuff in, and then start lead week. But I don't really know what, like, to do if you're just going in for early access. Um, Nisha, did you have anything else to add? No, I'm not lead, but okay. I know that, uh, yeah, I only know that early move-in is there to help you kind of 
for lead specifically, just because you have a program to follow. So don't worry too much if you don't have time to decorate, because once lead week is finished, you do have welcome weekend to decorate. <clears throat> so um, I think after the 15th, lead week should be over. Um, you will have time. So don't stress about it too much. You can always decorate throughout the quarter. I, had, I started decorating after my first month at SEO, so it's fine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> two more, sorry. What would you first recommend when we first get into your room? I would say take a video of your room just because, I mean, I never had this issue, but just in case there's like any fees that try to sneak up on you or like when you do your walkthrough, some people are just so excited to move everything in, but you don't notice there are scratches on the wall. Take a video of the whole entire room and favorite it. Please do not delete that just because it's like when you get a rental car, you need to make sure it's like your, it's like your proof that everything was fine or something was broken. That would be my first thing. And then I would just say it's fun to unpack a little, but don't don't overwhelm yourself. Like if you want to go out to eat with your family, go do that. Um, don't worry, you can still go out to eat with your family and come back, and you're you're not gonna miss hanging out with ten people. Like you can have time for yourself because that weekend is really overwhelming, and it's nice to be surrounded by people you know. Uh, yeah. I will say when sorry sorry. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, I was just gonna say when you first move in, you do have to fill out a check-in form on your housing portal. So, like Catherine said, you have to take pictures of certain places in your room. They'll give you the guidelines, but it's for making sure that you don't get charged for anything that you didn't damage. For my room, for example, there was just a bunch of blue tape on the wall, and that they did that to hide a bunch of holes that they made in the wall. And we were like, we're like, what do we do? I don't want to get charged for this. So we took pictures. You upload them, you make sure that some of the appliances are working, that they should be your plug points. The shower isn't like too annoying. We got our shower head changed because it was just a straight stream hitting your back and it was painful. So you can get those changed too. You can submit a work order. Um, but make sure that everything's in place for you to live just so that you're not uncomfortable your first week because it's already very overwhelming. So don't be in a hurry to set up your room. First, check out the room itself and be like, yeah, okay, this is a place where I can live. And then move in your things once you finish your check-in agreement. All I was gonna say is that once you have that all figured out, clean your room, like wipe it down with like Clorox wipes, just like, uh, you know, Lysol is just, you didn't know who was there before and it can be kind of dirty sometimes. So just clean your room before. You put all your nice stuff in there. Yeah. And once that is all done, I mean, leave your door open. It kind of, it's kind of weird. It's just like the norm, I guess. People just leave their doors open and that's like how you meet people. Personally, I didn't really like doing that because I moved in like, I was hella late to moving in. So like, I didn't even do that. When I, how I met people was like during like our floor meeting. That's like when I started talking to people or when I would like go out to eat like, we'd all be so confused. We're like, is this how you pick up your food? Just like make small talk there if you really don't want to open your door. Because I understand if it's really uncomfortable to do that. Okay. And then, um, are we allowed to book common rooms in our dorms? No. So your common rooms are just, they're not like conference rooms. So you can't book them. They're just like a place for you to hang out. They're usually where the kitchen is. Um, so it's where people come to cook and then you just sit around and hang out. You can't book it. It's just like a place that's there. Um, I believe there was like study rooms on the basement of SWIG. I don't believe there was a booking system. I think you just like went in and clearly someone was there. Yeah. Um, the next one is, would you recommend the micro fridge rental that sent in that school email? Mm, I I didn't use it, so I can't really. I didn't use it either. Me and my room. So check the prices, right? So I bought my mini fridge from Target, and there was a sale going on. It was like 120 bucks, and it's a pretty good fridge for them. So I just bought that and split it with my roommate, so it was perfect. Um, but if you find that your micro fridge rental is cheaper, because a lot of students do use it, and it comes with a microwave as well. So if you find that that's cheaper, please go ahead and use it. It is very commonly used, but it's also totally okay if you want to use one continuously for the next four years, you can buy your own, which is cheaper over time. 
What I would also say is like we move in like late September, so use the Camino stuff for now. And then Black Friday deals, they hit. So like, just say like you're tired of walking the Camino stuff, you could just buy stuff there because you're already buying a lot for moving into college. Um, the next one was, what kind of room decor do you recommend getting? So a very personal, personal question. Um, again, okay. schools. I will show you. So I went to Monterey, and I literally bought a skull. But I'm a I love skulls. But okay, make it your own. As long as you don't damage the walls, that's just the biggest thing. Your LED strip lights can damage them, so be very careful about that. Um, you don't want to chip off the paint. You don't want to make too many holes in the walls. You can't use nails at all. Don't bring nails, please. No hammering, no drilling. Um, I like, I have like a little, I forgot what this is called. Tapestry. But I have, yeah, <laughs> I have a tapestry. I have a different one for college. So I have a tapestry. I had a couple of posters I put up with like um, glue tag. Uh, I had pin up lights and that's basically it. We also had like, SEO flag, put up a Bronco spirit, things like that. Don't, don't just, just don't damage anything. That's the biggest thing. Uh, Kayla, your room's kind of cute. Did you have anything to add? <laughs> Thank you. I had, I recommend posters. A lot of posters that you like, like your favorite bands. I had some posters of plants, just anything you really like. I know. Thank you, this one. <laughs> I spent too much time decorating my room to be honest. Um, I recommend plants just because it helps brighten up the room and lights. Lights are a lot of fun. My lights have like little switches so like it can go really fast or it can just like be still and it was kind of cool because then like if I really needed to study fast I kind of like put on this faster lights to make me more pumped up. Oh yeah get like fake pants. Pants. Plants. <laughs> Get fake plants because you're going to be so busy. You don't have time to take care of another living thing, you know? Okay. What I would say is if you're too scared, like, don't get me wrong. I was hella scared to, like, make holes in my wall because my parents still kill me if I have damage costs and they'll be on me. So if you don't want to get the LED lights, get a projector. There's, like, these, like, starlight projectors on Amazon, um, and they can light up your room and do the same effect without any costs. Um, another thing that I got was, the desk low-key are kind of wide, at least for me. Like I didn't, they were wide for me. So I got um a bookshelf type of thing. It was like on Amazon. And like I put like books on it. I put my like medicine on there. I put a clock and it was pretty cute. Um so that's something I would recommend for your desks, just so you don't always have everything like on one level and flat. Your desks are pretty big, so you can put a bunch of stuff on there. I have like an alarm clock. I have a monitor that I put so make use of that desk space and then you also have like your own drawers and stuff like that so you can use those too. Yes. And the next one is is it hard to bring in and set up your own mini fridge? That depends because me and Kayla can lift a mini fridge and <laughs> so no, it's not really that hard because okay the process is you get someone to help you put it into the cart that part's fine it's when you have to get it out of the cart so <laughs> go deep that it literally fits a little mini fridge so that one might be a little tricky but it's not that bad like it it just make sure you hold it right it's it shouldn't be too bad and if anything that's how you make friends just be like hey can you help me real quick and like everyone's really helpful you'll have us help you probably during welcome weekend as well we'll be walking around and then we can help you all out but um just make sure you have someone to help you with moving and then putting the fridge itself in the room is not that hard just make sure you know where you want to put it and then take an extension cord and plug it in and you're good. Um, something is, please read the manual for your mini fridge because some of them have to be standing up upright for four hours before you can plug it in uh, just because there's like flammable gas inside and I don't want like something to blow up. So just read those caution, like those precaution things that you want. Uh, and then while you're defrosting your fridge as well, some of them like melt, like the ice box melts. I, my entire floor got wet. It was a pain to clean up when I was moving out. So just read those little things so that you don't have to clean up anything weird. Yeah, I'd rather do precautions than cleaning up in the room. Okay, 
I got another question. It says, how are the chairs for the desks? Are they comfy? Um, I believe they're all rocking. Are they rocking for all of them or no? Oh, just kidding. Sorry. No, 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 no. That's wrong. For a swig, it was like a rocking chair. Like you could like- They were not rocking. So it's like, it's a very weird and a little scary chair. My roommate <laughs> fell back. Like she fell in slow motion. It was so funny. But um, it's like, I don't know how to explain this. They're, they are comfortable for sure. Like it's not something that you can't stand. It's very comfortable. Uh, they're pretty wide too. But they have like a little slant thing and then and then it's like straight. So you can go to one level where you're like leaning back a little bit, but you're still solid. And then you can sit up completely straight too. The only problem is sometimes you forget that it can lean back a little. And then so you just fall a little back and you get so scared. And sometimes you overestimate it. And so you just fall back. So just be careful about that. I was, it's always a problem sometimes. Not I'm still not used to it. It was scary. Yeah, I'm still not used to it. Every time it goes back, I'm just like, what is happening? Oh my god. I'd be risking that. But I do <laughs> know some people get like a little pad, I guess, to make it more comfortable. And if it's cute, I might as well get it. Um, but they're not they're not painful. Um, yeah. Um, some people get their own chairs too. You can keep your other chair in the side and get your own chair if you want, but test out the a few chairs first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I got another one. Do students use their access card to pay for food on campus? Yes and no, it depends. Um, if you're talking about the physical one, then it, um, you would do that at like cafes or like the salad bar, like the pokey place, but it's all from the same account. So there's this dining points account that we like touched on a bit earlier that is linked to your card. So that's also linked to the app. So it's all, it's like your debit card. You can like order online and then pick up. That's kind of how most of people, most of the people order their food. Um, it's just cafes where you would be using like your physical or your digital thing to like order on the spot. Yeah. Okay, so um, another one is, will the dorms be closed in the winter and spring break? They will be your, closed during winter. Yeah. So uh, you can stay on campus for Thanksgiving too. Thanksgiving and spring break. And then yeah, the rest you have to move out. You don't have to bring your stuff with you. Misconception. You don't have to bring your stuff with you. Um, you could leave it there um, for the month. We have a month. That's right. We have four weeks of Christmas break. Last year we had three. This year we have four weeks. Yeah. In case y'all, in case y'all want, don't want school to start. <laughs> Okay, um, did we have any more questions? Did y'all get any private ones? I know. <clears throat> no. We're nearing time, but we know this is like a very, very informational event. So if y'all oh, just kidding, I think there's one. Yes, I will send a link to this. So many people can't find it. I will send the link to this. <laughs> I screenshotted it and just saved it. I know, me yeah. too. Please put this in like your favorites on your um, phone. Oh, another thing I did is like, I would screenshot the menu every single week and I would circle what I wanted because I was always indecisive. Really? Yep. I was indecisive about what I wanted to eat. You would do that. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> I just looked at the menu every day. Like when I'm hungry, I'd go through the Benson app and just look at it and then choose. If not, I'd go get Taco Bell or something. Right exactly. I don't want to get Taco Bell and realize there's a better dinner later. Okay. I just sent in the calendar for this school year. Um, please take a picture of this. It also tells you like other important stuff too. Um, it's just really nice to have. Also, if you're from out of state, California students don't get every like little holiday off. I did not know that. I almost skipped my class one day because I thought we had like some Monday off for some other holiday. My friends were like, why didn't you show up to class today? Oh, I did skip it. But I was like, I thought we had the day off. <laughs> but we didn't. Okay, so make sure you know when we do have holidays and when we don't. You can also request holidays for some so for some major festivals, I didn't know this. So, for example, I had a very, very important Hindu festival that I had to go home early for. I didn't know I could tell my teachers, hey, this is a festival, I need to go home. And then he'd give me like some time, extended time. It's on the SCU website, I think, somewhere. Um, search up SCU um, 
religious holidays, uh, you can request time off for some of the important festivals that are there and you request an extension and they have to give it to you. All right, so did anyone else have any other questions? If not, we don't want to keep you over time for no reason. After that. Okay, cool. Okay. Can... <laughs> so make sure to follow our socials. I know most of y'all have done this already, but obviously keep up with it. Um, we do post our events. I know it's kind of annoying to go through our about 50 highlights, but yeah, that's where you get the most information. TikTok, um, YouTube, our Q&A part two is coming out within a week. Depends on when I edit it. But again, you'll get most of your questions answered that way. And then, yeah, next slide. Uh, we have a lot of events coming up this week. Uh, we have two international student events tonight. So we're going to be up to like 2 a.m. conducting these events so that it's more convenient for the international students to attend. So definitely show up. It's going to be talking about life as an international student at SU and just registration. 